All right, so moving on, the next step is alternate picking. We're gonna take all the ideas that we did with down picking, but we're gonna apply them to down up picking. So the first thing is understanding when we're going to down up pick, again, we're applying the same technique that we did when we were down picking, okay? And even when we were strumming, trying to get a similar attack on both sides. Now, the thing about this is, is when you start alternate picking, you get kind of a next option, if you will, which is where do you want to do the picking? For instance, if you watch, if I turn up like this, I can start picking more on kind of the top side of the string. Here's kind of the, the front of the pick that, or the front of the string that I'd normally do. And then I can actually kind of come down here, pick on kind of the bottom half of the, the string. So if you think about it, depending on how you angle your hand, you can actually start down up picking kind of on the top of the string, on the front of the string, or on the bottom of the string, so to speak. And the trick is figuring out why. Like, why would you change that? Well, sometimes when I try and pick faster, sometimes what happens is I'll kind of pull in this finger a little bit, and I turn in just a little bit like this, and I pick on the top side of that string a little bit. Not always. But sometimes it, it feels more comfortable to me. And I just want you to be aware that that's an option, okay? Not that you couldn't have been doing that with your normal picking either, but generally when you're just doing down picking, you know, you're picking like you'd normally strum. But when you alternate pick, you can do the same thing. But you can choke that up a little bit this direction or turn it this direction a little bit too. Start trying to get comfortable with that. So the biggest thing about alternate picking is trying to make sure that you're moving with most efficiency, right? You're moving as little as possible and that your pick just like when we were doing down-up strumming, you're trying to get a similar attack on both the down and the up. And again, the slower you go, the more distance you can have. The faster you go, the more everything has to tighten up and there's less motion to try and get what you're trying to attack. But just like anything else, when you start doing alternate picking, focus on how it feels. Focus on how it sounds. Focus on where your stress points are, right? As you start doing this, where are you moving and does it feel comfortable to you? You know, what I try and do often with students is try and get them to envision in their mind that the string is, let's just say this is your string. You're literally trying to move from here to here, okay? If you're going slower, then it's okay to put space in between. But if you're trying to move faster, you're really just trying to get from point A to point B, which is on both sides of that string, okay? And if you think about alternate picking, and the nature of alternate picking, generally we're going faster, because if we were playing slower, we're probably not gonna be going like this, right? We'd be doing it as downs. So the point of alternate picking is to get us going twice as fast, just like strumming, right? That sort of thing. We can strum in between and all of a sudden our tempo, instead of feeling like quarter notes, it feels like eighth, or instead of eighth, it feels like 16th note, right? Same thing's happening here. So what you do with alternate picking are the exact same things. You have a 30 second exercise that you can just try and explore how things feel, how they sound, and remember, with like the 30 second exercise, you can do that multiple times. You don't just do it once and then move on to something else. You just give yourself 30 seconds to really try and figure out how things feel and how they sound. Once you kind of dial that in, you start thinking about your attack. And one thing that's really important is feeling how vastly different it is when you play slower is faster. You know, which muscles and which tendons engage or disengage as you play at different speeds or tighten up or your angle changes or whatever. Start figuring those things out because that's really important. If you start finding, oh, that really does happen when I speed up. Well, what speed do I go that that happens at? That way I know, like, let's say I'm going to play a song with a band and the song's at 160 beats per minute, right? Well, the more I know about myself, the more I know that this is the attack that I'm going to have to take to be able to execute that song, 
right? So I don't get in there and start trying to play and it feels really uncomfortable and I'm not able to, to make it sound good or it doesn't feel good. I really become aware of those things as I play. So it's really important. Alternate picking, there's lots. And again, we're going to be doing various exercises using down picking and alternate picking in just a little bit. These are just getting you going with the fundamentals of how they work, how they sound and that sort of thing. So you've got your 30 second, you've got your 60 second, and you've got your three minute exercise, which work great for alternate picking as well. The difference is, is alternate picking just tends to, it doesn't wear you out like down picking does. Down picking for me is more like a caveman thing because you're, you know, it's harder to do that. Alternate picking, it's almost like run, you know, all, down picking is like running with one leg. Alternate picking is using both legs. So it's more about finding that flow when you play. Um, and you're going to notice that. So don't think that because you're doing down picking at 140, two, two notes or two picks per click, right? That we were talking about that you're going to be able to do the same thing with alternate picking. Alternate picking might be way slower until you get really comfortable with it. And when you get comfortable with it, it should be, it's not twice as fast. It's going to be a lot faster than, than twice as fast. You know, so let's say your, your top speed is 140 of down picking. Your alternate picking could become significantly faster than 140 of down picking. Just understand that they're not they're not in direct correlation with each other. They're very different. Uh, when you first start, though, you've got to find the right tempo, just like you did with down. Don't assume that 140. If you started at 140 or 120 or whatever with your down picking, don't assume you should start at the same speed. If you were doing your downs here, I would not. I would not do my down ups there. Because needless to say, I could go faster than that, right? If your downs are here, in an ideal world, you'd want your down downs here, right? Twice as fast to begin with. That may not be the case, though. When you first start, you you know, let's say you're at 100 for two per click, right? And now all of a sudden, so you're doing this. And you want to do down ups now. You might set your metronome at 130 and try and do two per click doing down ups. Or 140 doing down, you know, so you're still doing two per click, but you're doing down ups. The changeover for me happens with students is when you get to 200. If you ever do any of these exercises and you get to 200 beats per minute doing two per click, bring it down to 100 and do four per click and start working your way back up again. So your goal is to get to 200 on whatever it is you're doing someday doing two per click. And when you get that, you go back down to 100 do four per click, which is the same thing. And now you start building that back up. That's how this works.